good evening, afternoon, or morning, depending on where you're tuning in from. Uh, if you're just coming to the channel, I just want to say welcome. This is the Lord's channel. Hallelujah. And the whole purpose of this channel is to give him all the praise, honor, and glory that we can muster up in a day. Hallelujah. And so I just wanted to come on here to share with you some of the things that the Lord has been doing. But first, but first and foremost, this is a great reminder. The Lord put the scripture on my heart. He wants me to read it before I get into what he's been up to. Amen. So this verse is from Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We see a common theme throughout the Bible and it is simply this. Faith without works is dead. If you want to experience the Lord for yourself, you have to seek him to find him. You have to knock for the door to be opened. You have to humble yourself in order for him to come rushing to your defense and to your aid. We have to humble ourselves and admit that we have been living a life of treachery and rebellion and faithlessness and completely out of God's natural order, right? And and when we start to admit to God that, you know what, what I've been doing, Lord, it's, it's not right. I know it's not right. I know I haven't been living right. I, I know that I don't treat people right. I know that I've made some really poor decisions. I know I can't save myself. I know I can't be my own savior. I know that I've tried it my way for far too long and my way hasn't worked. The whole point of this message is that in order to experience the Lord Jesus Christ for yourself, you have to at first acknowledge that he does exist. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God incarnate, God in the flesh, the second person of the Godhead, he really did walk among us he really did present himself in human flesh as a sacrifice for our rebellion he became sin he who knew no sin became sin for our rebellion and his blood has atoning properties hallelujah and you can become justified before God made right in the sight of God because every single one of us have sinned all have sinned all have fallen short of God's glorious standard, his holy standard. No one could meet it except for Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ is God incarnate, God in the flesh. God dwelt among us in a fleshly suit in the person of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he walked among us. He lived here on the earth. Hallelujah. He lived here for 33 and a half years. He took on the role of a, of a servant hallelujah he took on the role of a servant and he was obedient to the death and he's given us an example to follow and he said those who seek me will find me but you have to seek and search for him with your whole heart this cannot be a half-hearted effort we don't just say some five minute sinner's prayer and then that's good I get a free get out of jail free pass and just get to heaven no we need to have a relationship with God we need to have a relationship with our creator and we need to acknowledge hallelujah that creator creation didn't just show up one day right it just didn't appear that there is a creator and hallelujah he's the one who 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 says what is good and what is evil and his standards standards are holy because he is a holy god and we couldn't meet that standard we have rebelled against that standard every single one of us stands before him guilty as 
charged before we gave our life to Jesus Christ. However, he said, I will make you right in my sight. If you will just believe on my son, if you will just believe the gospel, if you will just repent, if you will just humble yourself and say, you know what? I haven't been living right. You know what? I have rebelled against the Holy God. You know what? Everything that I have tried to do has fallen apart and I just keep crashing into brick wall after brick wall. Maybe I should try it God's way. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let me tell you what I mean. I met with a sister two days ago, Tuesday, August 6, 2024. This sister grew up around Greek orthodoxy. She thought she knew the Lord. She thought she knew the Lord. She thought if she died and was taken and breathed her last breath on this earth, that she would have gone to be with him. She was so sure of her salvation, but she trusted in a lie, a gospel that is no gospel at all. We are saved by God's grace through faith. It is no works of our own, lest any man can boast. The work that each and every one of us is expected to do thereafter is to pick up our cross, whatever our cross may be, deny ourselves, deny the plan that we had for our lives in exchange for God's will and plan. God's will and plan. Yahweh, Yahweh has a plan. Hallelujah. Your creator has a plan for your life. And it was preordained. It was already decided before you took a breath on this earth. Hallelujah. And you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You can't remain the same. It is virtually impossible to be a child of God. Converted into a Christian. And to, to be a Christian, what that means, it just means to be a, a little Christ on the earth. To be Christ-like. To bear his image. Hallelujah. From glory to glory. Well, how on earth are we going to bear his image if we're so rebellious innately? It's in our DNA. Every single one of us was born rebellious against the things of God with disdain and contempt for God's natural order and moral law. So how? How can we be ye holy as he is holy? It's called sanctification. There's a lot of churches that don't talk about sanctification. But sanctification is the process that you go through after you have been born again. Born again by water in the spirit. You must be sealed with the Holy Ghost. How? By confessing Jesus Christ as Lord, not just Savior. Lord and Savior. Believing in your heart in that confession. Believing in your heart that he really did. He really did walk among us. He really was the Son of God. He really was God in human form. He really did sacrifice his life. He really did die on a cross. He really was buried in a tomb. And he really did three days later rise from the dead now i know there's there's so many false gods throughout history but every single false god died and never rose again they never got back up jesus christ is risen he is seated at the right hand of the father he has not stopped performing mighty miracles his ministry lasted three and a half years. And during those three and a half years, as he was doing these mighty miracles on the earth, and blind eyes were seeing, and deaf ears were hearing, and people that had died were being revived and resurrected, and sickness and disease was leaving bodies, and demons were being casted out. He's still doing it today. He's still doing it today. He hasn't stopped. Why? Because he is alive and active and sharper than a double-edged sword. Jesus Christ is the word made flesh, the living word, the bread of life, the manna from heaven. 
He is the resurrection. He is the only reason why you can be born again. And before he left his disciples, after appearing to over 500 people, 500 witnesses, knew he died on a cross, knew he was buried in a tomb, and saw him walking around very much alive, over 500 witnesses. But before he left his disciples and ascended to the right hand of the Father, he said this, I go to prepare a place for you to, that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus Christ wants you with him. God wants you with him. That's why he came to the earth and lived here as a man. Sin separated you from God. It severed your relationship. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. You had a relationship with him. You may not remember it, but you did. And sin caused this separation, this wall of hostility between us and God. And the wall is completely broken down and the veil is torn. The veil is removed off of foolish and darkened hearts. When we make that confession, Jesus is Lord, we believe in the gospel and we repent. That repentance comes naturally when you truly believe in your heart what you're saying. Because when you say that he's your Lord, that means he now governs your life, rules your life, masters your heart, mind, and life, not you. That's what it means when you say Jesus is Lord. He is Lord over you, Lord over your life. Why? Because you made a mess of it. We made a mess of our life. And Jesus Christ says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. And I guarantee you there's not a single person that's tuning in right now that hasn't felt that heavy laden if you don't right now. You haven't felt that like weight of the world on your shoulders. You're just carrying too much. You need some kind of relief. You're looking for a reprieve. You're looking for a break. How much longer am I supposed to feel oppressed and weighted down like this? This is heavy. God, it's too much. And Jesus said, cast your cares on me. So when he becomes your Lord, you can do that. You can bring him your anxiety, your frustration, your disappointment, your discouragement, your feelings of failure and defeat, whatever they are. And you can lay them at his feet and he'll take the weight. He'll take the weight. The Bible says to be not conform to the ways of this world don't adapt to what culture and society is doing the world is perishing and everything in it because of our rebellion against God he said don't be conformed to what everybody else is doing don't just follow the crowd Jesus said deny yourself and follow me why would we follow him? Well, maybe because he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way. He is the door. He is the gate. He is the only way to the Father. He is the only way you're getting into heaven. He is the only one who can forgive you of your sins. He is remission for your sins. He paid the penalty, the payment that you and I and everyone on this earth deserves for our rebellion against a holy God. Who gave us this beautiful world to live in. And we've done nothing but destroy it. Well, let's talk about the mercy of God today. Because this is how we give God glory. We talk about his goodness. And God is good on your worst day. I want you to understand that. God is good on your worst day. God will never stop being good. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. What does that mean? He's watering the same crops for you to eat tomorrow, where, whether you serve him or you don't, whether you believe in him or you don't, whether you are living to serve him or you're living to serve yourself, man, the devil, or the world. He is still feeding you from his abundant storehouses. Why? Because his kindness. Kindness is meant to draw us to repentance. And repentance is when you realize how wretched 
of a condition and a state you have found yourself in. When you realize that there is nothing good in us innately apart from Jesus Christ. We have the capacity for only evil continually and our depravity just gets worse and worse by the year without him. We can see it from one generation to the next. One generation to the next becoming more godless than the first and depravity just going further and further into the depths. But this is what he did for a sister in Christ. Hallelujah. This sister in Christ found herself in a very precarious situation. And for two years. Two years. She was experiencing the torments of hell right here on the earth. Because she had gotten herself involved with a group online while looking for Christian fellowship. And they had her astral projecting like a witch. And she didn't know. She thought that she was warring for God. And she was really on the wrong side of the fence. But God, in his mercy, pulled her out of the muck and the miry clay. He let her know that she had believed in a gospel that was no gospel at all. He broke the curses off of her. Hallelujah. Jesus became a curse to free us from the curse. He broke the curses off of her that she brought upon herself through the traditions and practices of Greek orthodoxy where they actually feed the dead, bring the dead into their home for a few days, worship the dead, talk to the dead. And we're not supposed to do that. It's an abomination to God. But that's a different story for a different day. Let me just tell you, out of the muck and the miry clay is where he found her, up to her neck. Up to her neck. And that's exactly what God does. We humble ourselves. We cry out. We admit we need a Savior. We admit we can't do this life by ourselves. And it takes humility. It takes humility to admit that the pit that you found yourself in is the one that you dug. But that is precisely the moment when his mighty right hand cracks through the clouds, reaches down and pulls you out of that mess. Hallelujah. So on this call. Because she has been diligently seeking him. Because we have been meeting on average once a week, praying, warring for each other, meditating on the word. And he has done massive amounts in deliverance, of deliverance in her. And he's far from being finished. God broke 209 strongholds in one call over the course of seven hours. Seven hours. His mercy is truly new every morning. His mercy endureth forever and ever and ever. He took this woman out of deception, out of delusion, out of suffering of the worst possible kind that you could experience on the earth. There was witchcraft coming up against her. And she was feeling excruciating pain as they were doing God knows what. And he broke 209 strongholds. So I just want to tell you what some of those strongholds were. And for those of you that aren't sure what a stronghold is. A stronghold is like a demonic fortress that's been built up in your mind over the years. It is definitely not something that is established overnight. It is something that takes years decades to build and to establish to keep that person in these perpetual cycles that are big time hindrances handicaps and oppressions forms of oppression in their life they hold them down they hold them back they keep them stagnant and stuck 
until Jesus comes like a wrecking ball and breaks every single one of them and crushes it to the dust. And what happens when a demonic stronghold is broken? Hallelujah. That means that the devil's lies are being broken off that individual. And when the devil's lies are being broken off of that ind individual, they're going to start to fill themselves with what? Truth. We are sanctified in the truth. And God's word is the truth. That is where we are washed and cleansed in the water of the word. This is how we are transformed. This is how our minds are renewed. This is how we start to think different. We don't just read the Bible and then go impress everybody with our worldly knowledge because knowledge, knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. The goal is love. The goal is being able to love God's people. And show mercy to the merciless. The, the goal is to be able to have an unoffendable heart or a less offendable heart. Amen. And this is why these things have to be broken off of us. Because we don't have the capacity to love, first of all, like God does. And we never will, but we can love better. We can be more gentle. We can be more compassionate. We can be more kind. We can be more merciful. We can be more patient. We can be more loving. We can be less judgmental. Let's start there. And this is how. So these are the following strongholds that he broke over seven hours. Delinquency. Childishness. Emotional immaturity. Immaturity. Irresponsibility, disinterest, superiority, inferiority, doubtfulness, worrisomeness, double-mindedness, rebelliousness, disobeying, willfulness, hard-heartedness, hard-headedness, worrying, anxiousness, dependency, neglecting, addiction, imprisonment. These are the names of the strong mans. Captivity, slavery, enslavement despairing he said of life anguish he said of soul downheartedness heavy heartedness when i got to the strong man of irrelevance that's number 40 he said how she feels about herself she feels irrelevant she feels like she does not matter the next strong man was unimportance blankness emptiness hollowness callousness abrasiveness treacherousness treachery betraying denying untrustworthiness undependability and unreliability those last three untrustworthiness undependability unreliability and the next one under development they all had to do with her not working her entire life she has never held a job and these strongholds are why self-righteousness doubting fainting inattentiveness, inattention, addictiveness, hatefulness, hating, despising, loathing, detesting, desperation, darkness, diminishing, fading, suffering, agonizing. Darkness through agonizing, those five, darkness, diminishing, fading, suffering, and agonizing, that was witchcraft. The next five were also witchcraft, entrapment, trapping, capturing, holding, withholding. That was witchcraft. Restraining, restraint, fearfulness. That was all witchcraft as well. The next one is number 70, shamefulness, bed rotting, rotting, forgetfulness, forgetting, shallowness, harshness. He said with herself and with others. Removing, removal, withdrawal, withdrawing, faithlessness, treason, cheating, exposing, smearing, slanderousness, slandering, spiteful. This is who we are at our core without Jesus Christ, just so you know. Brokenness, intensity, overreacting, disgusting, disloyalty, dishonor, disrespectfulness, disrespecting, shaming, accusing, reviling, repetition, repetitiveness, 
provocation, provoking, instigation. That's number 104. Instigating, suspicion, suspecting, indecision, indecisiveness, brain fog. That thing that makes you feel like you can't think clearly or have clarity or even be aware half the time. Slowing, deterring, hindering, obstructing, absolving. He set up guilt. Witchcraft was uh, high-mindedness. There was a strong man called Blackout. She said that she used to blackout or almost pass out. Disappearance, the Lord said, loss of self, disappearing, decaying, decay, deterioration, deteriorating, dying, mindlessness, idiocy, stupidity, unreasonableness, unsoundness, irrationality, simple-mindedness, frivolousness, flimsiness, triviality, restriction, emaciation, limitation, fathomlessness, randomness, aimlessness, misdirection, misdirecting, sketchiness, narrow-mindedness, hastiness, haste, the spirits that make you just want to do things impulsively without thinking, dislocating, dislocation, stealing, theft, robbery, that ran in her family, robbing, taking, plundering, stripping, some people they steal, and it's, and they don't even, they don't even have a need, it's not like they, they need anything, it's not like they're starving, it's not like they can't pay their bills, there's a strong man there, there's some kind of generational curse there, that is making them do that, that behavior that needs to be broken and it can only be broken in Jesus name the next one was lasciviousness that came in from the womb enticement enticing seducing sexual immorality moral decay was the name of a strong man that's number 162 that came in through witchcraft nudity immodesty shunning shrugging dismissing exaggeration which is just another form of lying, magnification, increasing, toxicity came in through witchcraft, allure, alluring, enchantment, enchanting, charming, and charm all came in through witchcraft. They were all established through witchcraft. Unattachment, disconnection, disconnecting, detaching, schizophrenia, it came in on her mother's side. And right after schizophrenia was a strong man of severing, severing of the mind, disassociating of the mind, splitting of the mind, detachment, suspiciousness, clowning. He had her renounce the need to be seen and the need to be liked, the need to be accepted and the need to be approved of. The next one was naivety, gullibleness, flippancy, facetiousness, restricting, incompleteness, incompletion the reason why we would begin a task and not be able to finish it imperfection fixating fixation inertia impulsivity impulsiveness scrambling her mind thoughts ideas and priorities promptness swiftness with those two, he said, feet quick to run to evil, mischievousness, same concept, reveling, which means to take intense pleasure or delight in sin. And the Bible tells us that our thoughts are only evil continually, apart from the Lord. Dark humor. 209 strongholds were broken. I'm going to tell you about the experiences that she had. This child of God has some gifts and one of them is called discerning of spirits. So not only can she feel the spirit sometimes, she can see what the spirit looks like. And the Lord will also show her by his spirit what's going on in the spirit as she's being freed from certain things. So she saw herself in a prison cell made of wood she didn't know it was herself but she said she saw this prison cell made of wood she saw this 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 thing just being broken and falling to pieces something like a figure walked out she didn't realize it was her just yet the cell was now empty 
and it just started dissolving like when something is in sulfuric acid so she's seeing this as these things are commanded being commanded in the name above any other name in the name of jesus christ to leave and never return she also saw shackles and chains on her wrists, fingers, and toes, and something like a chastity cage around her belly. There were these fiery sigils that she could see that were disintegrating and floating away, she said, like shaft in the wind as they were being exposed and commanded to go in the name above any other name. I say that to say this. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Wherever you have found yourself, know that Jesus Christ is greater than the battle you are currently in. But you must humble yourself. And if you are the one who has tasted and seen that the Lord is good and experienced his power, his mighty working, saving, delivering power, and I found yourself in a state seven times worse than the first. There is still hope for you. But you must humble yourself. And you must know this. The devil does not make it easy. When you're trying to cross from one side to the next. When you realize that you've backslidden for far too long. And then you try to crawl your way to the altar. Crawl to the feet of Jesus because you have no energy to do anything but crawl on the floor. But he will meet you halfway like the prodigal son. The prodigal, the prodigal son had squandered his father's wealth. His father was a king and he squandered his father's wealth on meaningless pursuits, trivial pursuits, fruitless endeavors and activities. And then he found himself starving with a job feeding the pigs. And he was so hungry that the pods that he was feeding to the pigs started to look good to him. And then he came to his senses. What am I doing here? I can just go to my father. Where have I found myself? How have I managed to forget that I have a father? And I can call on him anytime. And I can humble myself. And so he, he devised this plan. I'll, I'll just work off my debt. I'll just work off my debt, right? But the father sees him coming and doesn't even wait for him to come to him. He runs to him with open arms. That's what Jesus is going to do for some of you. You can guarantee it. If you seek and search for him with your whole heart, you will find God every time. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. This is the proof. This is one testimony. That's 209. There was another woman I spoke to. The Lord broke roughly, I think it was just above 180 strongholds. It was beautiful what she described. She kind of gasped a little bit and I said, are you feeling something? Did you hear something? Are you feeling something? And she said, I feel like this whooshing, like, like almost like this whirlwind is happening on the inside of me. I don't know how to describe it, Angela. But the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, he was referred to as a mighty rushing wind. Hallelujah. And so Jesus came in like a whirlwind and swept the house clean. Of all the things that were commanded to go. And this is how is our mind is renewed as well. When these strongholds are broken. And he cleans out all the lies of the devil. Then we can fill ourselves not only with the spirit of truth. But we can be filled with the truth. When we get into the infallible word of God and we meditate on it day and night like we're told to do. And then we start to put it in practice. We start to apply it to our, our life. And I can tell you this. It is nearly impossible for someone who has been converted to Christianity, truly born again, to comfortably go back 
like a dog to their vomit. When these strongholds are broken. And I need you to know this. A strong man has a strong hold on that individual. But greater is he that lives in us than he who is in the world. And I'm talking about the prince of the power of the air and his entire entourage. There is no one greater. No principality, no power, no ruler of wickedness in heavenly places that does not have to bow at the knee at the command of Jesus Christ. The only legal rights and permissions that they would have to continue tormenting an individual is when that person refuses to let go of unforgiveness. And I will tell you this. It is not by our capacity, capacity or capability that we can forgive the kind of offenses and atrocities that happen to people throughout their life. But when you invite Jesus Christ in, he does the impossible. He will flood your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit with his mercy and his love and his compassion and his forbearance and his gentleness towards the people that hurt and harmed you. And you will start to empathize with people you despised five minutes ago just because you are trusting in Christ to do what you could not do without him. And he will free you from that unforgiveness no matter what's been done to you, no matter what you've been through, no matter how much hatred and venom and poison and bitterness has contaminated your soul for far too long. You can give it to Jesus. You can humble yourself. You can forgive those people and he will give you the capacity to do it for real.